working together. And what is happening is that, that the state, the, ch the church, is contacting the state, as it were, so as to enforce what the church teaches, what the church believes. And so what's happening is it's changing the dynamic of one coming to God truly by faith to a more of a legal dynamic which says that we're gonna if you won't do what the church wants you to do, we're gonna employ the government to make sure you do. Now that begins to weaken the way people see God. Because it's saying if I if you if I can't convince you uh, you know to accept this by preaching then I'm going to do it another way. Now, I don't have really have time to get fully into that, but let me explain the other part. Church and church. Now, what is happening is there's a, what's called an ecumenical movement. Your pastor knows about this. An ecumenical movement where the doctrines are being dispensed with. I don't know why he talks about that. That would happen. They would dispense with their unique doctrines and begin to find ways to work together. You have a lot of different projects called um, a March for Jesus is one. And you have different ones. The, 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 uh, the one called um, something about men. Something men. Praying. And I'm forgetting. Manpower is one by T.D. Jakes. But you have a lot of these ecumenical thrusts, which means all the religions come together and they drop their differences and they focus on their similarities Amen. because they believe that they can uh, do greater works yes. if they just put aside the things that divide them. Mm -hmm. Well, quite naturally, if you know the Protestant Reformation and what started Baptist, what started Methodist, what started these different Protestant churches is there were people who held firmly to particular sections of the Bible for which they were willing to split off from maybe a mother church and go and start their, their own church. But now they're saying that's not important. You understand? So the people's resolve to know Jesus, not only in a personal way, but through his doctrine as well, is beginning to be weakened. They're saying just experiential. Okay? Okay. Uh, before I go to Brother Collins, my brother had his hand up. Um, which with regards to Uh, with regards to church and state, if you notice, over the past couple of months there was a new supreme judge, a, a new judge appointed to the Supreme Court of Justice, Sotomayor, that's her name. She's a devout Catholic, and this brings a Catholic majority to the Supreme Court. What are the implications of this, if any? And, you know, well, relations to um, L.G. White writing and National Sunday Law. Well, the Supreme Court is being dominated by Catholicism now. No doubt about it. And the only reason that that's not yet a working majority is because you also have some liberal Catholics. Don't, don't forget, you also have liberal Catholics, liberal wing of Catholicism that it doesn't really want to do with a lot of the hardline stances of Catholicism. Just going up, well, I'm saying east. I'm not in New York, I'm in California. But if I was in New York, I'd say going up east. Going into the New England area, you have a lot of Catholic. Boston, Massachusetts, that, that area, lots of Catholic. But you also have Ted Kennedy coming out of there, Catholic. You have John Kerry coming out of there, Catholic. Lot, you have here in California, Nancy Pelosi coming out of, uh, who is Catholic. But these don't represent the hardline Catholics. So you don't have quite, you have Scalia, you can count on Scalia. Okay, out of Queens. You can count on him. You can count on Clarence Thomas, even though he's supposed to be of another faith or converted or something. Converted. Converted, yes. And you can count on the, uh, uh, the Alito. And, and, and you can count on the Chief Justice. Robert. Robert, uh, what's his name again? Robert. Robert. Robert, yes. But you can't count on Kennedy. And you can't count on, there's another one there. But you, you can't yet, and Sotomayor, again, is being the choice of, of, uh, of uh, Obama. Obama, so you don't know what you're going to get there. Now, in the Congress, you already have the largest voting bloc as being Catholic. Mm -hmm. Has been that way for years. Mm -hmm. So, but you have, let me tell you this, 
I know if I had time to show you, well, if I had the video, I should say, if I had the video, uh, it was my hard drive was working, I can show you that in elections in 2000 and, I'm sorry, 2004 and 2008, in those elections, you had people like the Archbishop, his name is escaping me uh, right now. He's, he just got transferred to the Vatican, but he's out of St. Louis. But he was saying that Catholic politicians must either support or enact legislation in keeping with Catholic beliefs. If they do not, they should not receive communion or be excommunicated. And frankly, in Catholicism, if you can't receive communion, it's like you're excommunicated. That's right. They believe that's the access to Jesus himself, his that's body. What, that's what they did to John Kerry about his stance on abortion. Yeah, they threatened. They threatened John Kerry. But they, he didn't enact it. Right. But but they, they keep talking about it. And I have the same one I'm talking about. He just spoke at the National uh, Catholic Prayer Breakfast. And I have his... Um, his um, that video. But this is what they're doing in Europe right now. This is what they're doing in Europe right now. This is what the Pope is doing in Europe, Europe right now with regards to enacting these laws by the legislators, through the legislators, or push, trying to push through legislations. Well, they have children, the, the children's son there now is a national holiday. The European the Union. Children, right, in Europe. Yeah, the European Union, definitely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They, in fact, they were pushing hard the last time they came up with the charter. Right. They were pushing hard to get Sunday legislation yeah. in there. Or Sunday in the in their in their uh, official constitution, they were trying to get that in there, but they couldn't get it in there. Working time so, directive. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't quite uh, you know it wasn't uh, quite received. Now you had two questions. What was that? There was yeah. one of them. There was two of them. Two questions from earlier. One was: Is the manifestation of the gift of prophecy through Ellen White the fulfillment of me, Revelation twelve? Let me take that question. And then the second one was, has the general distinctions, has that come into the church? Okay. Let me take the first one, the first one first. The, you hear this growing, uh, this growing teaching in the church that prophecy does not necessarily, the spirit of prophecy does not necessarily end with Ellen White's death, 1915. Let me say this to you, brother. I just had a brother in this church. He's about shepherd's rod by his words. And sometimes that word is just used. But he's an avowed shepherd's rod. And he, as you know what shepherd's rod teach, shepherd's rods teach in the continuum of prophecy. They believe that when Ellen White died, the successor to him, to her, was V.T. Hotef. Okay? Then, V.T. Hotef died, and it was a man by the name of who? Who? David who? Koresh. David Koresh. Who they, he said, I'm the next prophet. So they believe in the continuum of prophecy. Let me explain this to you. I would never presume to tell you that God could not have another prophet. But I will tell you from my perspective, I would be surprised if he did, and let me tell you why. Because number two, very central reasons. Number one, the nature of the information that has already been written covers from now until the end of time. We have every last thing that's going to happen leading up to Jesus Christ's birth. The great controversy tells us, in fact, past this coming, it tells us that. If we would just read what is there, we will have all that we need. That's number one. Number two, we don't read what we have. Why would we get another one? <laughs> Amen. Amen. I can't ever, uh, begin to presume why. I don't know. So, now that's from my perspective. But I'm not the one who established prophets. The, the, let me say one other thing. Why I also, I was just dealing with this in the church where I'm pastoring. I was telling them that, you know something? One thing I would tell you is this. We are no longer in that day and time where even new light or new rev rev revelations would be received 